Shalom, shalom, shalom. Greetings, greetings, everyone. May Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya be magnified and may Yache, Moshiaka, be exalted. We give our praise to Ahaya for this opportunity to be here, fellowshipping with you all again. And um, may Ahaya be gracious. We'd like to go into a quick overview of the 400 year prophecy that was given. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. And also by understanding that prophecy will help us understand what Paul is also talking about in Galatians 3 and 17. Yeah. So that's the focus for this one. And let's get to it. Let's give a prayer right. unto Ahayah that he be gracious and prosper our works and save us. Psalms 117. O oh, praise Ahaya, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of Ahaya endure forever. Praise ye Ahaya. Hallelujah. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. In the name of Yache, we give you thanks, Ahaya, for all your love and kindness. And we beseech you, Ahaya, to cause thy presence to dwell in the midst of us as we come together in the name of Yache, the Shiaka. And we beseech you, Ahaya, to cause thy word to touch the hearts. Of those that are hearing, Wahayah, by the hearing of faith, that thy spirit may be imparted unto the hearers of Israel and of the Gentiles. And may you prosper us, Wahayah, and cause rivers of living water to flow out of our bellies, and righteous praise to come out of our mouths, that thy name be magnified. In the name of Yache, Meshiach, we pray. Yamen, Yamen, Amen. Alola Yah, Hayah, Thank you, Father. I call upon you, Ahayah, that thou may be gracious unto us, have mercy upon us, and deliver us with thy mighty great right hand of Yahweh, Messiah. That thou would let thy word spring out, O Ahayah, to the four corners of the earth. For you told us, Ezekiel, to prophesy unto the wind, and that thy word, thy word would, would flourish. We ask of you this day, O Hayah, that thou do thy good pleasure and thy marvelous work and deliver, deliver all your people, Israel and the Gentiles, and fulfill the promises of Abraham that you have committed unto him and to his seed. May thy name be blessed and may thy name be glorified. We praise you in the name of Yahweh and Messiah, so we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let's start with Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. Okay. Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know for surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. They shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Notice he says, that thy seed. So this prophecy of 400 years starts with the seed of Abraham. And they shall be a stranger in the land, and those that they are strangers, the strangers whose land they're in are going to afflict them 400 years. So starting with Abraham's seed, his seed is going to be afflicted 400 years. Continue. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward, Shall they come out with great suffering? At that time, that nation, on the, the major nation, was the Egyptians. Correct. And Ahaya judged them in the book of Exodus. He tells of the plagues that he had put upon the Egyptians to deliver the children of Israel out. By the, the final plague was the uh, killing of the firstborn. And then we know Pharaoh's his host got drowned in, drowned in the Red Sea. So in the scriptures, we're going to go and see where this prophecy 
started out for them? Where did it, where was it first told that his seed was going to inherit the land? Because the reason he's telling him this, can we touch back to this chapter where he asked them? Um, I think it's verse 3. Yes, verse 3. He um, started at verse 1 actually so they can see why he was told the um, the part about why his seed has to be afflicted 400 years, please. Uh, Genesis 15, verse 1. After these things, the word of Ahiah came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Adonai Ahiah, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Okay. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of Ahia came unto him, saying, This is this shall not be thine heir, but he sh but that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars that thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in Ahia, and he and and he counted it to him for righteousness. So he believed that his seed would be, he would have seed, and he believed that his seed would flourish, would be uh, multiplied in the earth. Continue. And he said unto him, I am Ahiah that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And Mary told him he's going to give him the land, and this is the question that Abraham asked as to how do I know I'm going to inherit it. All right. And he said, Adonai Ahiah, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And that's where. In verse 13, Ahia went on to show him the signs that's going to show him that he shall inherit it, which is the 400 year prophecy that we read in verse 13. Now there's a key marker that we're going to read in Joshua chapter 13, verse 17. Starting there to see that Abraham had actually been told about this promise 30 years prior to Isaac being born. Joshua 13 and 17, the book of Joshua. Okay. And it was in the 15th year of Abram's dwelling in the land of Canaan, which is the 70th year of the life of Abram. So he's 70 years old. And Ahiah appeared to Abram in that year, and he said to him, I am Ahiah who brought thee out of Ur of Chastin, to give thee this land for an inheritance. Right, so we see Abram foretold when he was 70, and he's going to give him that land for an inheritance. So when he was in, in Genesis chapter 15, he was already past 70 years of age. He was given more understanding as to how he was going to inherit the land when he was told of the 400-year prophecy. If we can continue reading. Verse 18. Now, therefore, walk before me and be perfect and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed will I give this land for an inheritance. From the river Mitzrayim unto the river, the great river Euphrates. So there we see Ahia gave him opportunity. He told him, walk before me and be thou perfect and keep my command. So that also lets us know that the promises given to Abraham came with requirements. That's right. He had to believe and he had to show his obedience by obeying the law. And bearing the fruits of the spirit, of course, because Abraham was the faithful and the friend of Allah. So we see that in order to partake in the promises and the covenants of Abraham, we have to keep the commandments because Abraham kept the commandments. All right, let's continue reading. And thou shalt come to thy fathers in peace and in good age. Mm -hmm. And the fourth generation shall return here to this land and shall inherit it forever. And there we see that he noticed he had also said in the verse prior to that he was going to give him from the river Egypt to the river Euphrates. This was what he had told him when he was 70, and then he had made him to understand the fullness of it when in Genesis chapter 15. Because the same thing is mentioned, you jump back to Genesis 15 there, in uh, verse, uh, after verse 14, what he, what he says after verse 14. In verse 15 of Genesis 15, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So he has said the same thing to him again, all right? But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, 
for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And he also made him understand more what it meant by what was going to happen in the fourth generation. The iniquity of the Amorites had to come to its fullness for them, for them to be taken out of the land. And that fourth generation was in the days of Joshua. Mm -hmm. Continue. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between the, those pieces. Mm -hmm. In the same day, Ahia made a covenant with Abram saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the great from the river Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Notice it's interesting that this time he makes the covenant. He seals it. He makes the covenant with him. And he, he said, Unto thy seed have I given this land. It's already established. And it's the same what he mentioned, river of Egypt and the river Euphrates. It's interesting. Can you go back to where we're at in uh, uh, Jasher? Yeah. Let me see how we said it in Jasher. Is it up, up a little bit? Verse 18. He says, in, it's interesting in Jasher 13, 18. He says, Now therefore walk before me and be perfect and keep my commands. For to thee and to thy seed will I give this land for an inheritance. But then in, Jash, in Genesis 15, he told him, I have given it. Mm. it he established it. It was set. Hence, it was a covenant because he doesn't break his covenant. That's right. So we see Abraham received the promises at 70 years old. Right? He was told about it at 70 years old. He had Isaac 30 years later at 100 years old. If we can go to Genesis chapter 21 verse 5. This is when that 400 year time is going to start with the birth of Isaac. So remember the 30 years from before when he was given it. Right? Genesis 21 verse 5. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Ishakwah was born unto him. So there we have that time stamp. Remember, he was born at a hundred years, thirty years from when Abraham was given the promise. Can you check? Go to Genesis chapter twenty-six. All right, go one verse. I apologize. Yeah, there it is. Genesis twenty-six and two. And a height appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land. And I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all nations be, of the earth be blessed. It's interesting. Again, he said, I will give it. So the opportunity, if obedience is kept. That Ichikako will get the promises as well. And we know Ichikako was obedient all the way. Mm -hmm. So he received it as well. And why was Ahaya going to do this? Because remember, Ahaya told Abram, be perfect and keep my commands. And he did do it, hence he was sealed. Because what does it say in Genesis 26 and 5? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statutes. My statutes and, and my laws. So therefore, we know that in order to receive these promises, Jew or Gentile, to partake in the covenants given to Abraham, both Jew and Gentile, we have to keep the commandments and obey the voice of Ahiah, keep his charge and his statutes and his laws, just as Abraham did, faithful Abraham. Because as James told us in James chapter 2, verse 14 to 26, that faith without works is dead. And we have to show our faith by our works. So may we be encouraged to do that. Um, this, so we saw Isaac at 100 years old. Isaac, uh, at, uh, Abram was 100 years old when Isaac was born. So we start right there. Now we're going to find the 400 years. I, um, Jacob was born when Isaac was 60. So can we go to Genesis chapter 25, verse 26, please? Genesis 25, verse 26. And after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Ichikakwa was three score years old when she bare them. So there we see Ichikakwa was three score years old. Ichikakwa is Isaac, because Ichinachiochi is this is Hebrew, is Igbo. We still speak it to this day. Ichi means to laugh. Ka makes it greater, to exceed in laughter. And then kwa means to cry. So hence his name means to 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 laugh to the point of crying, Yichikakwa, he laughed until he cried. Or Ichikakwa, you laugh, you laugh, you laugh exceedingly. And then Yakobe, this is our language, ko means to hook. And be makes it 
continuous. So he's that's why they call him a supplier because he's continually hooking. Yakobe, this is all in our language and on the website. Uh, it has been gracious to give us. We really encourage you to check it out. And you will see in the section on the Igbo language, there's a document with plenty of words showing that the Igbo is actually Hebrew language. So here we see we have the 60 year time since so we got the, the, the time period that started for this 400 years, and there's 60 right there. Right? Now let's go to Genesis 47 and 9. So 60, and then Jacob, or Jacob, was 130 years old when he went into Egypt. Right? So we read that verse in Genesis 47 and 9. And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. Few and evil days have the days of the years of my life been. There we see that Jacob, will be, he was being afflicted by Laban in his time as well. And touch it. So we have 60 plus 130. That's 190 years, right? right. Now, what's interesting, <laughs> can you read J Jasher chapter 81, verse 2 to 3? This is why we are so thankful to Ahayada. He's brought out the true records and given us opportunity to get back in touch with our history for us and for all nations. In the book of Jasher, we have the time stamp to understand that 400 year prophecy. Because it started from Isaac when he was born, and then it went the the because it said that the nation that shall afflict them, Ahaya shall judge in Genesis 15 and 14, and they shall come out with a great substance. We know back then that was when the Israelites came out of Egypt with go all the jewels of the Egyptians, and they took all their spoil as they left that out of Egypt. And the time stamp for that is actually 210 years. And two, 190 plus 210 is 400. That was the 400 year prophecy at that time. And we can confirm it here in Jasher 81, verse 1 to 3. 1 to 4. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sakoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides the little ones and their wives. Also, a mixed multitude went up with them, and flocks and herds, even much cattle. And the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in the land of Egypt in hard labor was 210 years. So that's the, from the time Jacob came in to Egypt at 130 years old, you add 210. That was the time span of the Israelites being in the land of Egypt, dwelling in the land of Goshen. And at the end of 210 years, Ahiah brought forth the children of Israel from Egypt with a strong hand. Yeah, how you be magnified. Yeah. So there we see. Can we pull up the um yes. the uh we have a chart, brothers and sisters, for you to see so you can kind of get a visual of what we just went over. So we have Abram receives the promise at seven years old. We read that in Jasher, right? And then we're gonna look at Galatians three and seventeen after we go through a few more scriptures. And then we saw 30 years after he was given the promise, Isaac is born. So there's the 30 years. That, if you subtract that 30 years, the rest of it, 60, 130, and 210, is where you get the 400 year prophecy that was told to Abraham. But the, when you add the 30 years, that's why Exodus chapter 12, verse 41 says 430 years. And that's why Paul is going to say 430 years, because they were speaking up from the time the promise was given. Not from the time that the seed had been born, as uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 said. So we encourage you to pause the video, take a picture, take a screenshot of this, so you can have this for your notes or write it down, whichever is seen as good in thy sight. And we can continue on. We can look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 40 and 41. And now we can understand why it says 430 years here, because now we know that the 30 years was a time when Abraham was told the promise 30 years before Isaac was born. Please. Exodus chapter 12, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who, dwe who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of Ahia went out from the land of Egypt. And there now we understand that 430 year time stamp through the precepts. And can you go to Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 24, 
verse 1 to 7 so we can see what was implemented for the Israelites. Because at that, in that year, when they were brought out, in that 430th year, they received the, they received the covenant to keep the commandments. And they received the blood of the covenant. Because we saw when Abraham was told a covenant, there was no blood sprinkled upon him. Right. To sanctify the covenant. Right. He was told it by oath. That's right. But the Israelites, when they were told the covenant in the Mount Sinai, they were the blood. There was blood of the covenant. And if you have the opportunity, please, we encourage you to look at the video on Old Covenant versus New Covenant to understand what all transpired. So, touching here to see Exodus chapter 24, verse 1 to 7, to see how that animal sacrifice, blood sanctification, or blood atonement, was made for the Israelites by the sprinkling on of the book to sanctify the words of the covenant, because we actually have to have something to abide by, the same way Abraham was told, be perfect and keep my commands. That's right. So even when given it by oath and by promise in speech, there was also the words that were necessary to keep the commands, because the commands are eternal, that go along with the eternal promise. And we read here in Exodus chapter 24, verse 1 to 7, please. Exodus 24, right okay. Exodus 24, verse 1. And he said unto Moshe, Come up unto Ahiah, thou and Elrano and Nadab and Abahu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship of ye afar off. And Moshe alone shall come near Ahiah, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moshe came and told the people all the words of Ahiah and all the judgment. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words of Ahiah which Ahiah have said we would do. And there we see that he told them all the words and judgments. And this was after Ahiah had said the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. So we have confirmation that the words of the covenant pertain to more than the Ten Commandments. Because right. Ahiah said the Ten Commandments. And you read Exodus chapter 20. The people got scared as ever. And they said, do not let Allah Hayyam talk with us. You go talk with him. Find out all the words he says. And come back and tell us and we'll do it. When you read Exodus chapter 20, you'll see that. And this is where it, Moses came and told them the rest of the words. And they agreed to do it. Let's continue, please. And Moshe wrote all the words of Ahiah and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, excuse me, of the children of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Ahia. And Mushi took half of the blood and put it in basin, and half of the blood and sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, All that I have said we would do and be obedient. So there we see the the, the, the agreement came by hearing. They heard all the law and agreed to it. Right. right. They were supposed to have faith in it from right then. Here by because they hit from the hearing of faith. Continue. And Mushi took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the book of the, the blood of the covenant which I have made with you concerning all these words. And this is where we see the sanctification or the justification by atonement, by blood first being done on the Israelites. Because in the Old Testament there was no blood sprinkled on Abraham, there was no blood sprinkled on Isaac, there was no blood sprinkled on Jacob, nor his twelve sons. Right. Nor the two sons of Je uh, uh, the two th sons yeah. of Joseph, um, Ephraim and Manasseh. This is when that blood sprinkling first happened. This is why Paul, when we go to the New Testament, Paul talking about the law, that, that was talking about the law of animal sacrifice. Now we go to Gal Galatians chapter 3, verse 17, to see what Paul is saying. If we can start at verse 16, please. Galatians 3 and 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Mm -hmm. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as, but as of one. And to, the, and to thy seed, which is Messiah, and this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of Elohim and Messiah, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. And now we understand what he's saying. The covenant that was made of Elohim in Messiah, because the promise was for Messiah, 
And Abraham had the spirit of Mishiaka in him as Ahayah was telling the word that what would be fulfilled. And he said, the law, now we understand what he means by law. That law that was brought was the law of animal sacrifice. And we can confirm it because he said, which was 430 years after. And by what we have shown, the 430 years after is when the blood was sprinkled on the Israelites. Okay. Cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Because animal sacrifice came after the fact. Okay. And the promise was according to the spirit. Because it was the word of Allah, which is spirit, as John chapter 6 verse 63 says. So now we have better understanding of what Paul, Paul is talking about when he says the law. He's actually talking about animal sacrifice. That's why in Acts chapter 13, verse 39, he told the men of Israel and all those that fear Allah, which were the Gentiles that were there listening as well, that in this man, which is Mishiach Ayach, I think he said in verse 38 and 39, is preached the forgiveness of sins. And by him shall we be justified from all sins that you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Because the law of Moses was a sprinkle of the blood to the cleansing by the blood of bulls and rams which could never purge the conscience as hebrews chapter 9 verse 9 says and hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 says that the sprinkling of the bloods of bulls and goats can never make the man perfect and never purge the conscience but with the true sacrifice the sacrifice according to the eternal spirit which is yache in hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 it shows that by that eternal sacrifice in the heavens Yahweh, by his blood, has purged our hearts and cleared our conscience so that we may serve the living Allah in truth and in sincerity. So now you have a good, quick understanding of what Paul was talking about when he said the law, which was for 430 years after, cannot disannul. Because they cannot, that law, that animal sacrifice law, cannot disannul the promise that was made to Abraham. So now we have understanding on that, and this is what we wanted to uh, put in our hearts to go over, to give a quick overall understanding of what that 430 years meant when it was said in Exodus chapter 12, in verse 41, and also to understand the 400 years that was promised to Abraham, in, to promise to Abram in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. So now we understand that 400 years from Isaac to the Exodus. And we understand this here in Genesis in Galatians chapter 3 verse 17 that the 430 years was talking about from when Abram, Abram was given the promise at 70 years old to the time of the Exodus when they received the blood sprinkling, the blood atonement, the blood of the covenant with animal sacrifice. And it makes it even more interesting. It says, Paul says, and this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of Allah in Mishiach showing that it, he was comparing the two covenants. Right. The blood of the covenant from Exodus chapter 24, yeah. and then the promised covenant in Mishiach, which was according to the Spirit, because it was right. spoken by Allah. So I uh, hope you have a good understanding of what that means. And we're also, uh, I be gracious and prosperous and place His hand upon us to prosper the works of our hands. We're going to go into more teachings about this to delve into it a little bit more. This is just an overview. Okay? Uh, I be with us all. I believe in Yachim Mishiach, and when he turned those that believe not. So repentance, uh, I has no pleasure in the death of him that died. So we we'll be encouraged to do all the good will of Ahayal Ahayam and keeping his commandments, believing in his son Yache, Mishiach, is the word of the name of salvation, the name above all names, the name on which we may be saved. And also bearing the fruits of the Spirit, that we may attain unto the kingdom, and by bearing the powers of these holy spirits, that Ahaya may be magnified in us. With that, we'll, Ahaya, we will um, talk with you soon. Ahaya will. Ahaya be with you all. In Mishiachayachi. Ahaya be gracious. We'll see you all very soon. Shalom. Shalom.